everyone, it's Claire Rogers from Itopia Coaching. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, in case you see a little guy back there, that's uh, Bagheera. That's one of my other cats. I think you have met Baloo in previous videos. This is his brother, Bagheera. Anyway, this week I want to talk about the number one reason why I think people do not change their lives when they say they want to. And that reason is I think that the majority of people in society are not living a conscious life. What does that mean exactly? Well, it means that I believe that most of society, and yes, I realize that I'm making a pretty bold statement here, but I'm going to back it up. I believe that most of society is living unconsciously, meaning they are living in autopilot mode. And then on top of living in autopilot mode, what's happening is they are feeding their mind with distractions, social media, TV, the internet, technology, for example. And then we're also consuming food that is not good for us as well, which is not helping the mindset at all. We're not eating consciously. And then on top of all of this, we have an ego or the little voice in our head that talks to us all day long, that gives us observations and judgments and thoughts about what's going on around us. And it's focusing on the past and the future, meaning that I think that the average person is very rarely living in the here and now moment. Now, this probably sounds all kind of weird and esoteric to you, and you're thinking, where on earth are you going with this, Claire? Okay, so let me back up. Let me give you an everyday example. Imagine you have gone to bed and you probably what, got six hours sleep a night. If you're lucky, most people don't even get six hours a night. They're going to bed at midnight, 1 a.m., and then they're getting up at seven or eight in the morning to go to work. So you've gotten out of bed and you're groggy and you're tired. What's the first thing you do? You go to your kitchen and you race and you go and make coffee or tea or whatever it is. A lot of people will skip breakfast. Then you're going to go jump in the shower and you're probably not even going to remember the shower that you took because you're running around in autopilot mode. And then from there, you race out the door to go to work. And what do you do on the commute to work? You plug into, into technology, your Blackberry, your smartphone, your e-reader, your headphones are your commuting companions. So you're feeding your mind with noise. And then you get to work. And then you have conference calls on top of conference calls and meetings on top of meetings. And then you're constantly adding to the constant to-do list that you have at work. Because we as a society have adopted this notion that we need to do more with less. So we're all working way too many hours and have way too much to do in a day. Meaning that we rarely take any time out in our day to actually just stop and breathe. And then finally, when we finish work, what do we do? We rush to get home. And again, on the commute home, what do we do? We plug back into technology. We get the Blackberry. We get the iPhone, the smartphone, the e-reader, the headphones, whatever it may be. And again, we have put all these distractions back in our mind. And then what do we do? We race home and we make dinner. And what do we do again? We plug in. We feed our mind again with distractions and we watch a TV or we consume social media or we're on the Internet. And quite frankly, you know what I think we're doing as a society? We are quite literally swiping, scrolling, watching and working our precious lives away, meaning we are not living a conscious life. So if we're not living a conscious life, no wonder we don't make changes in our life because we're not consciously aware of what we're doing at any given one time. Now, you probably hear me quite headed up and, and quite passionate about this subject. Well, I'm super passionate about it because I want us all to wake up. Because can you imagine what a world would be like if we all woke up every day living a conscious, meaningful life? We would all be happy. And society as a whole would be happy. So you might be listening to this and thinking, well, actually, Claire, I totally don't agree with you. I don't think that most of society is asleep. And that's cool. You don't have to believe me. But do me a favor. Google how many hours the average person is working. And also Google how many hours the average person spends consuming media. And I promise you, if you Google this, don't take my word for it. Go and do your research. But if you Google this, you're going to come to the same realization as me. 
that we are scrolling, swiping, working, and watching our lives go away. And what a complete and utter waste that is. So you might have done your research now, and you've come to the realization that, yes, a lot of society is asleep. But you might be thinking to yourself, well, actually, this doesn't apply to me. So, okay, fair enough. Maybe it doesn't apply to you. But let's do a little test. Go grab a pen and a piece of paper. Okay, now I want you to sit down and think of nothing for five minutes. I'll wait. Okay, I won't wait. Otherwise, it's going to make this video quite boring. But tell me what happens at the end of the five minutes. I pretty much guarantee that that little monkey chatter in your mind, your ego, was chatting to you the whole time. Might have been judging me, might have been judging the exercise, might have been telling you that it's time to go to the grocery store, but I guarantee you it was chatting to you the whole time. And that's just a short exercise to show how distracted our minds are. Now, by the way, if your mind did chat to you the whole time, then there's no judgment from me. I still have a mind that chats to me all of the time, but I'm learning how to turn that chatter off. So now where am I going with it in this video? What is the solution that I'm, I'm suggesting that we do as a society? Well, it's threefold. One is we need to become more consciously aware as to what we are putting in our mind, meaning that media that we are consuming, I pretty much guarantee most of it is negative. So you are feeding your mind with negativity, whether it's the news, Pretty much, you know, think about it. When you watch the news, you think, well, I'm turning on the news to learn about what's going on in the world. But let me say this to you. Have you ever noticed when you turn on the news, the journalists always start with saying good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and then give a laundry list of why it's not such a good day? They never say a nice story. So what have you done? You have just fed your mind with negativity. Now, I'm not saying that you can't watch the news. I'm just saying to be aware of the negativity that you're putting in your mind. And then when you're watching a TV show, well, a lot of them are quite violent. So again, you're polluting your mind with negativity. And then now you're looking at social media and you're looking at all the perfect lives and the perfect bodies. And then you're probably not feeling very good about yourself because you don't have the perfect life and the perfect body and the perfect face. So you're judging, why can't I be perfect? So again, you're polluting your mind. And then once you've consumed all of that media, what happens? The little monkey chatter in your mind takes over and starts telling you that you're not good enough, that you are not slim enough, fat enough, tall enough, whatever. It's telling you that you are not good enough and that you are not worthy and deserving of a good life because your mind is in a negative place. So what's my solution? Turn the media off. Give yourself a break. Okay, so as I say, it was threefold. So the first one up was turn off that media. We don't need it. And the second thing I want to say is we got to become mindful of what we are eating. Sugar is not our friend. All of these additives that we're putting in our body, it's polluting us. Now, I know we've seen lots of diets and lots of TV shows about why certain foods are not good for us. So we actually intellectually know it, but why aren't we applying it? Tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to stop eating the sugar. Tomorrow I'm going to diet. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Do it today. If you stop eating all of this crap and become more consciously aware as to what you're putting into your body, this is also going to help your mindset. Now, I'm not going to tell you what you can and cannot eat, but I am going to tell you that if you do give up the additives or anything in a package, for example, you know, my theory in life is that whatever God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, made, you're pretty much good to go. But anything out of a packet, proceed with caution because there's going to be something in there that your body does not like, that is not natural for your body to consume which what happens then? It impacts the mindset. And then the third thing that I would say as well is that we need to check in with that little voice, our ego and our mind to find out what's going on there. That little exercise that you just did for five minutes of try to think of nothing. As I say, I'm guaranteed that your ego would have chatted to you the whole time. 
what is your ego talking about to you? What is it saying to you? So my solution to this is we need to become aware as to what that voice is saying. And the thing that I try to do myself is I listen out for that voice. And then I say to myself, is what that voice saying to me, is it helping me? Is it helping me to live a happy, meaningful, fulfilling life? Or is it not? And if it's not, then change the subject. Now, that doesn't happen overnight. This is a constant practice. But by becoming aware of our thoughts, by turning off the negativity and the media that we're putting in our mind, and, and by stopping to consume the crap that we're putting into our bodies, we will become more consciously aware as to what that monkey chatter is doing. And from there, we can tell it to shut up. We don't have to listen to the negativity or the story it tells us. And so by implementing those three things, let me repeat them again. Get rid of the negativity. Stop consuming the media that does not serve you. Change what you're consuming or bring conscious awareness as to what you're consuming. Is it feeding your mind? If it's not, then proceed with caution or consider making those changes. And three, listen out for that chatter in your mind and ask yourself, again, I know I'm repeating myself, but this is really important. Ask yourself, every thought that comes in your mind, every time it takes you to the past or into the future, but takes you away from living in the now and present moment, ask yourself, is this thought helping me? to live a happy, meaningful life in this moment. And if it's not, then change the subject. I hope that you found that this video was helpful. Um, I'm quite passionate about this subject. I think, I honestly, I feel as though I figured out why people are not changing their lives when they say they want to. It's because they don't have the conscious awareness as to what is actually going on in their life. And I think it's time that we as a society wake up and take our power back and live a happy, meaningful life. I hope that you found this helpful. If you've got any questions or comments, drop me a note below or drop me an email, which you can find on this page. I hope you have a great week ahead and I hope you bring some conscious awareness into your life. Take care.